In this demo, we'll go through a very short video creating VAs or VNF on the AVX platform. First, you will need to log on to the system. And as soon as you log on, you'll be sent to the dashboard screen, which shows the status of the AVX platform. From here, you'll go to the system information page where it lists uh, a very high level view of all the VAs or VNFs that are currently installed on the AVX platform. As you can see here, the orange marks are the ones that are array VAs or VNFs, and the gray squares that you see here are the third-party VAs or VNFs. Now, from this screen, I just need to click the plus button here, which will send me to a create VA instance screen, where I will just name a VA name. I will demo, uh, name this demo, and it will ask me to create a VA size. Now, those of you who are familiar with the system will understand what these entries, small, medium, and large means. Uh, what they are are specific sizes of your VAs or VNFs based on vCPU numbers, RAM, and hard disk. In this case, we will create an entry size, which means that it will assign uh, one vCPU and limited amount of RAM and HDD space. Then it asks for a domain ID. Domain ID indicates that which NUMA boundary that you will be placing this VA or VNF onto the platform. Uh, I am running this on an AVX 10650, so it has two processors. So I will just put this on domain two. And on image, it will ask me to select which VA image I am going to instantiate this VA or VNF on. Now, I already have a few on this system. As you can see, there's AG Default, Fortinet, uh, and Acelera, Positive Technologies. In this case, I will just go ahead and select a Fortinet image. Click Next. It will send me to the screen where I will need to assign uh, resources to this VA instance. First, up on the top screen, it shows me the list of the ports, which is indicated as VF. So this is a screen where the system will try to do the so-called PF to VF association. Each physical port has up to eight VFs that you could assign to. And here, as you can see, you know, port one has eight going all the way up to port 16 as the 10650 has 16 10 gig ports. And in this demo, I will just select this one here. But right now I cannot do that because I am on auto mode. Auto mode will select the VF automatically. As you can see here, it already automatically selected uh, port nine and VF number one, two, three, four, five. And because it's auto, it already selected an SSL. Now for here, you could say unassigned because um, for non-array devices, the SSL VFs are not needed. So I could just do it this way, or I could say manual, which I will do in this demo and select port 10 VF1. And I will not select any SSL VF because it doesn't need any. So then I do save changes. And I am done. So now I see a new square, which is great because this is not an array VA and it is called demo, which I named. And just to go back, uh, if you understand what I just did was I grabbed a image a VNF image that is loaded on, that was preloaded onto this device. And I allocated vCPU, RAM, and HDD space. I've also done core pinning while I'm doing that. And then what I did when I was selecting the PF from the VF was that I just did an uh, SRIOV configuration from a specific port on the AVX to this VNF or VA. And as you saw on the demo, I've done it in mere, you know, without 
any, uh, if I haven't done a lot of talking, I could have done it in within like 30 seconds and it's already there. Um, from here, I could just click that VA and I see the overview of this Fortinet VA or VNF that I just created. And if I want to run this, I just click the start button. You can see the system goes running. And once this is all spun up and it's booted, it will show, start showing uh, data here. Another thing I could do is I could open a VNC console. And on the VNC console, it just shows how the, uh, the VNF is running. And now it's fully booted. So it sends me to the FortiGate login page. So this concludes the short demo regarding uh, instantiating a VA onto the AVX. The main difference here compared to a standard size server is, is that on a server to do this, you will have to go and configure many, many items to create a VNF or VA onto a standard server. You have to have pretty much full you know, knowledge of how to do this, how to assign resources, how to do the NUMA boundary consideration, how to configure SIOV, how to do CPU core pinning. And the real differentiation between a normal server and the AVX is that this is very much streamlined on the AVX web GUI. Uh, those of you who prefer using the CLI, all of this, what all the all the things that I just done on the web GUI is also doable on the AVX CLI, where you will use more of a network engineer friendly network CLI to do this operation rather than using Linux server commands. So that concludes this demo. Thank you very much.